Okay, now it's time to talk about application lifecycle management and how important this is. So as a developer, you would need to have a certain mindset in your mind, in your head, in your heart. Have a mindset that you are developing whenever you are developing something that your application, your software are, not will be, but are being used by thousands of people. Imagine that. Can you imagine that? You are developing an application in Salesforce that are being used by thousands, not tens, not hundreds, but thousands of people. Let that sink into your heart. So whenever you're developing something, see these thousands of people using it every single day, whatever you're developing. That is an important mindset for you to grasp. Now, if you have that mindset, this application lifecycle management will make more sense. Why? The purpose of application lifecycle management is for you to better and efficiently develop and manage your development process. So whenever you are making changes or updates or patches to your existing software or you are actually wanting to release a brand new application, you will follow this application lifecycle management process because if you're not, it's going to be a big mess, guaranteed. Because if you make changes directly on the Salesforce org where everybody is working every single day, it's going to create chaos and a big mess. For example, you're creating an application and you change the way something looks, right? And you're working on the actual production org where thousands of people are actually using it at that very same moment you're applying your change. You create a new field, a simple example, or you add a field on a page layout and somebody is trying to create a new record and they are not aware of this new field and they see, what, what is this for? What just happened? I'm not aware of this new field. It's going to create confusion and stuff like that. So you get the point, right? So this is very important. Make sure you always remember when you're developing something that thousands of people are using your application. Grasp that. So now we can talk about the application management because now it makes sense, okay? Basically, you don't want to change stuff on your production org. The platform that are being used by thousands upon thousands of people in your own organization. So imagine you are working in an organization that employs 5,000 employees, right? And everybody is on Salesforce. You can't just make some changes on that production platform. It will be a mess, right? So what's the workaround? There are several processes that we can use. We can use change set development, org development, or package development. All process will avoid implementing things on your own production org. So this will be implemented on organizations or not organizations, Salesforce orgs, instances outside of your main production org, either on a developer org or sandboxes 
or you can create your own packages in scratch um, scratch orgs and then deploy it on the production org when it's thoroughly tested and yeah well documented as well then you can deploy it to your main production org where thousands of people will see it and before it you can plan the rollout by training the staff that will be impacted by this new change making lots of videos of what's changed and things like that plan things out right so you have to have this mindset don't have a mindset of a one person mentality where you just make as you go whatever i'm just going to make this happen right now it's going to create a chaos so don't have that kind of mindset all right so well, what can you change in a production org in the real environment? You can create reports, you know, dashboards, reports, and you can change email templates. That's fine. You don't have to keep making this on the sandbox where you don't have an actual real data. Sometimes it's frustrating even to create reports and dashboards on sandboxes because the data is not enough. And when there is data, it's actually fake data unless you have a full sandbox org. Well, that's another story, but yeah, you can create dashboards, reports, email templates on the real production org. But other than that, you might want to use sandboxes or scratch org or developer org and test it thoroughly and then document it very well and then roll it out into the production as a chain set or as a package update or you deploy the package. So what can happen if you don't test or you just make you just make it on the production? Well, you can't make certain things. You can make workflow rule, but you cannot make Apex code. You can't. You know anything that has any coding, you cannot make it on the production org. So a lot of things can break. That's the the point, right? So make make sure you don't make stuff on the production, and you know, forget about everybody else. <laughs> I'm just going to implement it right now and I'm done. You're not done. It's going to be so much chain reaction onwards like that. And then everybody's going to start calling you. What on earth? What is this? Right? Okay. Move to, ch move to chain sets for safer customizations. So we're going to talk about this more thoroughly on its own module, the chain sets module. Because otherwise, it will be a bit abstract to understand what on earth is a chain set if you never work with chain set before. Basically, you make change, you make changes on your sandbox orgs, right? You make you develop on your sandbox, and then whatever you develop, you want to deploy it on the production, and then you add every components, custom fields, workflow process, validation rule, whatever you add them into a change set and then you deploy them onto the production. So whatever you're developing on your sandbox will now be deployed on the production. Okay, so that's a change set. Apply a little order to chaos. Well, I've talked about it, so we're gonna go ahead. Wait, doesn't adding process slows down development? No, because in the long run, you will save tons of time. Otherwise, if you have chaos and everything is just tangled up already in your production org, it's a big mess, a big, big mess. It's so, so much time wasted to untangle whatever is messed up already there. You know, sounds from a real personal experience. <laughs> All right, because every new Salesforce developer or admin, you're just itchy to just do stuff right away on your production org, right? And just create this custom fields, you know, and maybe hide it for now, uh, uh, unhide it or make it visible later. Well, don't do that. You're gonna set yourself up for a big, big mess down the road, okay? Especially when you are working with lots of employees on your company, hundreds, thousands, okay? So plan your release, develop, Develop it, test it, and then build your release, test your release, and then release it. That's the proper way to do it. So that's the story, right? 
So let's do the quiz now. Which of the following can you create safely in a production organization? Reports and dashboards for sure. How does using ALM application lifecycle management process help development go faster? The process helps you avoid breaking things so the work proceeds more smoothly. Makes sense, right? All right, I'll see you on the next section. Boom. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself bada bing bada boom